Hello, valued viewers. I hope you're all doing very well. Special shout out to my Super Thanks contributors, another unique username, and Dale Patricia8442. Your contributions are greatly appreciated, and from the bottom of my heart, thank you very much. Today's video is also a Super Thanks request, and the request was loosely worded as weird and amazing rolling stock. So what I came up with was the rail car that could have ended the world. Please enjoy it. Okay, so our general timeline is the early 1980s. We are at the height of the Cold War paranoia, and that led to many military leaders in both the United States and the Soviet Union to question a nuclear missile silo survivability in the event of a full-scale nuclear exchange. And that's a very understandable concern because one of the key factors of why submarine warfare has gotten so big is the fact that they're very difficult to track down and destroy before they can launch their weapons. Whereas a stationary missile silo is right there in the ground and you can just blast it and take it out in one shot. And the shot that takes it out doesn't even have to be necessarily nuclear. It can be a bu bunker buster bomb or something like that. So in 1983, U.S. intelligence agencies discovered that the Soviet Union had deployed a railroad-based nuclear missile system that could travel a distance of 622 miles per day undetected and launch missiles from any location along its route. I don't know how they made a locomotive in, or a train undetectable from satellites and whatnot, but whatever. My only guess would be night travel or something like that. So this Russian nuclear missile system was known as the SS-24 Scalpel. The missile was only test fired once during an exercise in the Kostroma region. The missile hit a target in Kamchatka and most troubling, American monitors were unable to fix the train's coordinates either before or after the launch, which again, I don't know how that's possible, even in those time frames. So, acting on this intelligence in 1986, the White House announced President Ronald Reagan's approval to develop a railroad system for basing part of the Peacekeeper Intercontinental Ballistic Missile, or ICBM, force. So, according to information from the National Museum of the Air Force, to increase survivability of this force, 50 Peacekeeper missiles would deploy in existing Minutemen silos and 50 more would be mounted on 25 United States Air Force trains, two per train. Each train would consist of two locomotives, two security cars, two missile launch cars housing the missiles, one launch control car, one fuel car, and one maintenance car. Each launch car carried one Peacekeeper ICBM and a launch tube that could be elevated to fire the missile from the bed of the car. So to me, this sounds basically like the old Tomahawk cruise missile box launcher uh, that was on U.S. warships back in the days that I served in the Navy. So these weaponized trains would be stored in hardened bunkers except in times of heightened tension in which they would then disperse around the nation's many railroads railroad lines disguised as standard freight trains. So I think that just answered our earlier question of how the Soviet Union was able to move these trains, these ICBM trains, from one place to another for 600 and some odd miles. They were disguised as a freight train. This railroad setup was known officially as the Peacekeeper Rail Garrison. The prototype car was delivered to the United States Air Force in October of 1990 for evaluation and testing. The next year would see the end of the Cold War and the cancelization of the project. Only two cars were ever built, one of which is on display at the National Museum of the United States Air Force at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in Ohio. So, there are some obvious strategic advantages to dispersing nuclear missiles among civilian freight traffic on the railroad. For instance, a stationary nuclear missile silo in, say, Montana is certainly on a target package list in a vault in Moscow. If survivability is the goal, one can either spend the taxpayer dollars hardening the silo that the enemy knows about or spend the money making the missiles mobile and or camouflaged. And just like with just about anything, the big issue here is the cost over benefit. According to the Government Accountability Office 1989 report on the subject, the Peacekeeper Rail Garrison Missile System was projected to cost $7.4 billion dollars which is over twice that now in today's money. In addition, a 2014 RAND study pointed out that the rail and truck launchers have distinct disadvantages. 
First, maintaining an intercontinental missile on a moving train is far more difficult than maintenance in a silo. Plus, rail lines can be blocked by snow, which could restrict missile trains to more southern routes. Furthermore, there are only so many rail lines in a given area with advances in satellite surveillance. An adversary can focus on a few key, key areas. If they were to positively identify a missile train, the payload would be a sitting duck much more, and much more vulnerable than an ICBM in a concrete silo. Okay, so me personally, if I was in some kind of war and I was a general or an admiral or something like that, I'm targeting that nation's transportation system in every way possible anyhow. So the chances of a railroad line under my command uh, of getting destroyed is quite high, regardless if I think it has nuclear missiles moving on it or not. The end of the Cold War brought a welcome respite from the constant tension of assured destruction. Today, Russia's last rail missile system stands in the Central Museum in St. Petersburg, Warsaw Terminal, while America's last existing missile car sits in a field in Ohio. These freight cars are a sobering reminder of the lengths a nation will go to to ensure that in the event of an unwinnable nuclear war, we take the other team out too. And as a former sailor, and I'm pretty sure every soldier or sailor in the United States would have a, a distinct distaste for uh, the fascination of nuclear weapons. On one hand, anything designed to obliterate so indiscriminately is counter to Americans' long-held ideals of avoiding civilian casualties when possible. On the other, the sheer destructive power of a nuclear explosion elicits an all that we've reserved only for profound religious experiences. The welcome retirement of a weaponized freight train is one less link in the chain of nuclear escalation, especially in an era of increased nationalism with adversaries who are growing bolder by the day. So with that, the following specifications apply to the Peacekeeper Rail Garrison Car. The in-service dates of these rail cars were 1990-1991. The manufacturer was Rockwell International. There were two total built. One is preserved. The fleet numbers were WECX 1001 and 1002. The capacity of each car was one LG, LGM-118A ICBM. The operators were the United States Air Force. The specifications, the car body construction was by the St. Louis Refrigerator Car Company. The car length was 87 feet. The width was 10 feet 4 inches. The height was 15 feet 9 inches. The weight was 550,000 pounds. The bogies were 4x4 four four wheel. The coupling system was H tight lock. The track gauge, of course, was 1,435 1, millimeters or 4 feet 8.5 inches. And we'll, with that, we'll wrap up this video, and I'll end it by saying thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed the content today, please hit the like button, and if you have not done so, please subscribe to the channel. Both actually help the channel grow tremendously. And also, visit our print shop at Nickel Plate Limited on Etsy.com if you want to help support the channel in that way. And we thank you once again.